kick the shit out of him sort of straight? No, 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 Jesus, no. Hello Fluffy Tails, I'm the Serious Squirrel and welcome to Firewatch. Well, many people begged me to play this, especially my girlfriend, so I thought, why not, let's give it a try. What can go wrong, right? As always, I already jinxed it right at the beginning, beginning of the series. But, as always, before I start rambling, we are going to jump right into the game. I made all the settings, so let's start a new game. This game is very narration heavy, so as always, I'm going to shut my mouth a little bit more than usual. And, yeah, let's see where it takes us, right? I think it's going to be good. Campo Santo presents. Incorporation with Panic Incorporated. Boulder, Colorado, 1975. Hey, if the game doesn't tell us, I will. You see Julia. I see Julia. I clicked it, so I saw her. She's about your age, late 20s. Laughing with well-dressed professors and grad students from nearby CU Boulder. You, Henry, are out drinking with your pals. You approach her. You're drunk. So, what's your no major or you, you're pretty? I think we're going for the awkward. You're pretty, she says coolly. You're not. You're a future hangover. What? You reply confused. Someone should buy you a cheeseburger, she says. She flags down a waiter and one week later, you're Julia's boyfriend. And now we're in an elevator. Use objects. Oh, I can pick up my backpack. That's a cool backpack. I like it. I'll take it. And why am I in this elevator? Now I'm in a garage. Is that my... Yes. This is my car. Load backpack. Close this thing. Alrighty. You date for over a year. She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. You move in. You share an apartment near the school with a few of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck. You drink beer just about anywhere. Life is good. Julia wants to get a dog. There is a scruffy, undersized beagle. Julia is in love. She wants to bring it with her to class. There is also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German Shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking this dog. It's badass. Oh well. She's in love with the beagle, so let's go with the beagle, right? Bucket's a good dog, and a week later, you've totally forgotten about the other one. Julia loves him. You love him too. 1979. You talk out on the deck. It's summer. 9.30pm, and the heat still radiates off of the high desert. What do you think about kids? She asks. Kids? They're not very smart, or good at much. I'm saying if you and I have some couple of little idiots. That would be pretty good. In that case, we should probably get married. Yeah, I would like that, you say. These kids are going to be screwed up enough. It's probably for the best that their parents are hitched. You say she's absolutely right. I'm in love with this game already. Look at this beautiful scenery. Can I go over there? I can. I want to go over there. Let me go over there. Fire danger today. Super high. Oh shit. Hmm. Not good. But what do we have here? Map. Some stuff. No fireworks. Probably good. In a forest area. Let's take a hike. Apparently, we like hikes. 1980. 
It's a first day night and Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried and getting angry about a minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. You get mad. You call her an inconsiderate asshole. She tells you to fuck yourself and to not be such a baby. You call her selfish. She knows you mean it and it hurts her feelings. 1981. Julia still likes to draw. She draws plans from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. You pose and flex like He-Man. You frolic like a Victoria's Secret model. Totally. Julia was right. You are very pretty. No, that was steep. And it's getting dark. Hmm. I don't know if it's good if it gets dark while we're out here. I really don't want to be in the forest or dark. Oh well, let's see. I love the music already. It's, it's so great. That's why I bought the soundtrack. Again. I'm a sucker for soundtracks. Mm. 1982. During the summers, you and Julia enjoy walking back at the night. There's a festival in town. It brings in folks from faraway places. One of them tries to muck you with a knife. Bucket gets kicked. Bebop, but fuck the, the dog! Julia yells. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she's stressed. You confront the attacker. You scare him away, you beat his goddamn face in. Let's scare him away. You reach into your pocket like you've got a gun and threaten to kill him. You manage to scare all three of you. He runs away. Julia asks to take a different path from that day forward. You say okay. You don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. 1984. Plans to have kids get waylaid by work. Julia gets offered a job at Yale. Yale is in Connecticut, 2000 miles away. It's a great job. Associate department chair, she wants to move. You absolutely do not. Uh, let's, let's convince her not to take the job. You tell her that this means you two won't have a family. She says that's bullshit. She's totally right. She asks if her taking the job means you won't come with her. You say yes, again, bullshit, but she decides not to take it. 1985. Julia is asked to leave Bowler on paid leave after having an episode. She lost it on a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember she had happily loaned them to him just two days prior. She was found crying in the stairwell. You say that maybe you guys should talk to someone about it. You make macaroni and drink wine, forget it. We should talk to somebody. After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they are worried that Julia might be suffering from early onset dementia. She's 41. You both decide to keep it a secret for now. I knew it was bad to be there at dark. Uh, Joel, pick up. Okay, yep. Uh, <clears throat> Bucket is getting older. Julia comments that it's kind of nice because she gets in less trouble around the house. A week later, she goes back to the university. 1987. Julia's affliction gets worse. She can't remember things in class. Her research is in shambles. She drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason and has to be brought home to by the police. She's devastated. She's sent home on permanent medical leave. Some days you get Julia who calls you dope and your unborn children little idiots. Other days you get a stranger. She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes she goes into panic believing her dad is at the door. You tell her family. They are crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. For a while, 
Your friends come by with little things to brighten the day. She gets worse. 1988. You spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel, the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with 24-hour care, a home. It sits with you for a couple of months. <sighs> I think it would be better for her to be in full-time care. For the both of us. And now I'm in the forest, looking at the sky. It's a beautiful sky. <laughs> oh man, I shouldn't keep the voice all the time. A little bit cheery, guys! Come on! I know it's a sad story, but we're running through the forest and it's beautiful. We should... Oh, it's a deer. Hi, deer. Her family agrees with your decision. You find a fantastic place in Boulder and move her there. You see her every day, then every other day. You go out to the bar with your old friends. It's not the same. You get the feeling that every wife tells her husband, If you ever put me in a home like Henry did, I will cut your balls off. You slowly decide to not see your old friends that much. 1989. Julia's sister Susan moves to Boulder to be close to her. She visits her every day. You go with her some of the time. Susan buys you an old typewriter and urges you to use it if you won't see a therapist. You won't. You've always really liked Susan. Months go by. Bucket dies. Julia doesn't remember him when you tell her. Sometimes it takes her a minute to lock in on you. In the back of your mind, you believe it's because you see her less and less. And seeing her less and less makes her forget you more. You think. Summer is coming, and you see an ad in the paper for a job. You take it. And that's how we start into the game. Because it's a firewatch job, and now we have a beautiful tower. And a lot of space to cover, apparently. Um, well, for this, this story was sad. And... I'm not sure if I've taken the right choices or if they affect the game any, in any way. And they don't really represent the choices I would make. But I want to give Henry a fleshed out character. And this is a beautiful view. God damn it. Uh, yeah, Henry a uh, fleshed out character. And that's why I chose the things I chose. I should put a disclaimer. Doesn't represent the, the views of the player. Okay. As you might know, this is a explorer game. So we will have a lot to explore. And we will also have a lot of conversation, apparently. So let's push the generator switch to have a little light. Hello, Two Forks Tower. Oh. Hi. Are you on the radio? Uh. Um, hello? Whoever this is? It's Henry, right? Yeah. I'm Delilah. Yeah, that's what the guy said on the phone. So, what's wrong with you? Excuse me? People take this job to get away from something. So, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? That's a great idea. Go ahead. Look, I just hiked for two days, so I don't really follow whatever it is you're doing right now. You take a stab at what's wrong with me. Fine, then can I sleep forever? Sure, buddy. Okay, now go ahead. Um, you killed three ex-husbands. You're rebelling against mom. Nobody had... You killed three ex-husbands. Okay, uh, you've killed three husbands. You're a black widow and you're just out here until the heat dies down and then you'll kill again. Ooh, very good. Bravo, Henry. I knew it. Okay, I sleep now? Not quite. Now you. Okay, good night. Bye. Let's see. All right. I don't know anything about you. I say you 
got fired from your job and have finally decided to write your novel. That's the sort of bullshit reason you'll find a man out in the woods. Good night. Welcome to the job. Firewatch! Okay, well... Good morning, Henry. Well, I guess good afternoon. <laughs> you probably slept like a rock. Anyway, uh, there's still a few hours of daylight to get some work in. I can see you at your desk, so call me when you're ready. Alright, let's answer the radio call. I'm gonna keep the first episode a little longer. So you get settled in and don't only have the uh, sad story. So let's talk to Delina. Hey, sorry, guess I slept in. You got a relaxing, what, 14 hours of sleep? Whew. Yeah, Jesus, I guess it's what, 6? Six? 6.45. Whoops. Don't worry about it. That hike puts everyone out of commission for a day or two. But now that you're up, let me quickly get you acquainted with the job. There's a thing in the middle of your room with a round map on it. Do you see it? Yup. Okay, yeah, I see it. This is the Osborne Firefinder, invented in 1914 by W.B. Osborne? You use this to spot, you guessed it, fi- What the fuck? What is it? Nothing. Um, you, uh, you use this to- Oh, fuck me! Good God, language, lady. Out your west-facing window. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Where's west? And to use compass. Are those fucking fireworks? Yep. Whoa, that's not legal, right? Uh, no. You need to get down there right now and stop them. Fire danger is through the fucking roof. Is that really my job? Your job is whatever I say it is. Look, the closest ranger is like two days away. Go down there and set them straight. Like, kick the shit out of them sort of straight? No, 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 no. Jesus, no. What? I'm not a cop. It's not like I've got a rule book over here. Just make sure they don't do it again. Take their shit. Okay. All right, fine. Don't feed anyone a knuckle sandwich. Get going. You'll probably need a rope to get down the shale between you and the lake, if I remember right. There should be one in the supply box on the way. The code is 1234. It's actually that for all of them. Convenient. That's one word for it. Okay, don't I need my backpack with me? No? No? Oh, I take it automatically. Alright! Well then, let's go on a hike and see if we can't tell those people to not do fireworks. Oh, you have a map. All right. Uh, find rope in NFS cache. Zoom in. 306. All right. Found the way I need to go. Uh, that took longer than it needed to take because I'm a doofus at orientating myself. You maybe know that from Colat. But hey, at least we have a blip on the map where we are. So that's always helpful, right? And there's the cache. All right. Uh, one, two, three, four. Right? Yeah. That's the most secure locker code ever. There's a pine cone. Old rope. Got it. Uh, granola bar. People just stuff these things with old food? That's how you get bears. Those boxes are bear proof. I wouldn't worry about it. All right. Well then, let me eat it. Good, perfect. Um, let's copy the information. Let's just follow this path. I think it's the right way. Hopefully, maybe. Looks like it. All right, we're going this way. It's perfect day to follow the road. Wait, is there something? No, there was nothing. All right, and the fireworks got louder, so I think I'm on the right way. Yay! Oh my God, this is so beautiful. This is so beautiful. Yes, I'm totally on the right way. Rope rock. Rope rock. Uh, 
Uh, this shale slide is steep. How do you expect me to get down this? I don't remember it being that bad. It's not even named on our topos. Yeah, well, I'd go with Widowmaker. Come on, it's really not that bad. It's a 50-foot cliff made of rocks that look like knives. They just look like knives, okay? Plus, there's already a Widowmaker on the backside of Carter Mountain. It would be confusing. All right. How do you expect me to get down this? Well, did you get that rope? Yeah, I got it. Okay, just lash it to something nearby and take it slow. Lash it to something nearby, all right. Let's lash it here. It's totally... Hey, I'm going the right way if I'm at the shale slide, right? Toward the fireworks? You're not lost. Those fireworks are going off to the west of you. It's down the slide and across the meadow, okay? Okay. Let's repel. This is not safe. This is totally not safe. No, no, no! Ow. Called it! Ouch. Oh man. Ow! Hey. What the hell's wrong with you? Uh, Widowmaker got the best of me. What exactly happened? My rope snapped coming down the shale slide. You didn't break anything, did you? No, I think I'll make it. Well, be careful for Christ's sake. Yep, I will be. Thank you very much. Well, Fluffy Tales, I don't want to do the whole day on the first episode. I think I'm going to leave it at that at the moment. So, yeah, I think you got a good view over what this game will be. Of course, there will be more running around in the future episodes, but so far I think we have a winner here. A real winner. Anyway, Fluffy Tales, I hope you had fun watching this episode. Come back in the next one. And as always, I'll leave you with a hearty goodbye, goodbye.